Hey, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm going to do the video that I talked about the last time where I talk a little bit about uh, angle of attack and what that means in terms of general aviation. Before I start the video though, I need to make sure that I uh, make a disclaimer. This video series describes how I engineered my own angle of attack sensor built from off-the-shelf electronics and 3D parts that I've printed myself, which communicate angle of attack data over Bluetooth link to an Android device to display real-time angle of attack values in the cockpit. This is an experimental device and I have no interest in making it a commercial product for sale. You do not have my permission to build and sell this design, but you may use it for yourself. I am not a certified flight instructor and this device is not a certified product. By building one, you're taking your life and the lives of your passengers into your own hands. As pilot in command, you have the final responsibility for the safe outcome of every flight. The device may be used to improve overall situational awareness but it is not designed and should not be used as a primary instrument for flight. Now that I have the disclaimer out of the way, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button and uh, follow along as I demonstrate how I built this uh, device and how you can build your own. So in this video, I'm going to take a little bit of time to talk about why angle of attack is important uh, for those of us who like to fly in the world of general aviation. Uh, you, most of you, if you are already a pilot, have uh, gone through some training already that's probably discussed what angle of attack is. If not, uh, there's plenty of information out there. Um, I mostly just want to talk about why it's important just because I think that it adds more safety uh, to general aviation. All this information you can find, uh, there's lots of resources out there. The FAA has several books that you can read, download for free and read. Uh, the Airplane Flying Handbook, the Instrument Flying Handbook. Uh, they both discuss uh, the importance of angle of attack um, in terms of, you know, keeping your airplane from stalling uh, in mid-flight. All right, so switching back up to the, my upper camera here, the, the blue ruler here is going to demonstrate um, the ground underneath. Um, and then we have a little airplane that's going to be flying um, just a little bit over, make sure that's in the picture, that this little airplane that'll be flying over the ground beneath. Um, you can see in the, this picture there's a sort of a turquoise or a light blue uh, color on the airfoil, the main wing of the aircraft. Um, and that's also demonstrated here in this other graphic that I made uh, with a marker. Um, and this arrow that demonstrates the direction of the relative wind uh, in terms of uh, where the aircraft is going. So let's talk first um, about what creates lift in an aircraft. There is some debate amongst experts about what actually causes lift to occur. Um, the, in the FAA's handbooks, um, they discuss two different um, reasons that uh, an airplane will fly. Um, and the first um, that they'll talk about is what's known as Bernoulli's Principle. I remember being in seventh grade, sitting in my science class and my science teacher talking about what Bernoulli's Principle was. So Bernoulli's Principle um, tells us that an increase of speed of a fluid within a flow field occurs simultaneously with a decrease of static pressure. So what does that mean? Well, uh, what that means is, let's take our uh, cross section of our wing here. So if we have wind flowing over the top of our wing, it's going to hit the, the, the leading edge of the wing up here and then the wind is gonna kind of go around the wing. And you'll notice that at the top of our wing, at the top of our airfoil, the distance to get from here to here is longer than the distance from here to here. We know that a straight line is the shortest distance between two points. So as this air goes over the top of the wing, the, the air that flows over the top has to flow faster. And there are, there's some debate about why it goes faster, but <clears throat> we do know that that does happen. Um, some people say it's because the fields that it goes through it has to kind of squish and as it squishes there's not enough room for the air so it has to go faster to get through. Um, other people say that you know as it reaches the end of the wing um, that you know in order for the for the molecules if you have two molecules going over the top of the wing the only way for the one on top to get there at the same time as the second is if it speeds up. Um, you can debate that all day if you want. Um, I'm just saying that that happens. Let's, let's just follow two air molecules over the um, across the surface of the wing. The one over the top goes faster than the one on the bottom. And Bernoulli's principle tells us that as the air flows faster over the top of the wing, it creates a decrease of static pressure. 
whereas the uh, air molecules that go under the wing um, don't change. Um, or in other words, they have a higher relative pressure than the, than the air molecules over the top of the wing. So when that happens, it causes the wing to lift. All right. The other uh, way that the FAA and most people say uh, an aircraft is able to fly is using Newton's third law, which says for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Um, so you've probably driven along in a car and you've put your hand out the window before. Um, and as you're, as you're putting your hand out the window, the air hits your hand. And as you move your hand up and down, uh, the wind deflects off of it, pushes your hand up or down, right? So let's say that's the same thing here with this wing. As we're flying through the air, if we tip our wing up a little bit and the aircraft is still flying along straight and level here, the air is going to hit this wing and deflect some of the air downwards and the mass of that air is also going to push against the wing which is going to be deflected upwards. All right. So that is the other way, according again to the FAA manuals, that's how lift is created. So um, depending on who you talk to, it can be one or both of those methods, uh, both of those laws, both of those principles, whatever you want to call it. Now an airfoil uh, can be a wing. It could be also a blade on a propeller. Um, it could be a blade on a rotorcraft, um, a helicopter. It could be the blade on a helicopter as well. Um, they all have similar shapes um, and they do the same thing. They create lift. Um, in the case of a propeller, it kind of pulls the airplane along using the same principle. Um, so if you take a look at this wing, uh, the cross section of this wing, at the very tip of the wing, at the front of it, this is called the leading edge. At the very back of it, this point at the end is called the trailing edge. If you draw a straight line between those two points, you get what's called a chord line. The chord line is important because that is what you measure your angle of attack by. So what does that mean? So if we're flying along straight and level in the air, the relative wind is going to be hitting that chord line basically straight on. Um, so depending on you know how fast you're going, the shape of your wing and things like that, how much weight your aircraft is carrying, that angle might have to be adjusted slightly in order to keep you aloft. If you're actually flying along straight and level, cord line at exactly parallel to the wind, you're probably not actually going to be flying too well. Most aircraft have a slight pitch uh, as they're flying. Let's get this out of the way and we'll put our airplane in here so it makes it a little easier to follow along. So let's say we're flying along in our aircraft and we pull back the throttle a little bit. What that does is it causes the propeller to spin slower. The propeller creates less thrust and therefore the aircraft isn't going through the air as quickly, which means that our wing isn't creating as much lift either and the aircraft will begin to descend. Now you keep that aircraft at the same pitch and it will continue to hit the relative wind at the same direction, meaning the, the wind that you're running into, it's not necessarily even wind, it's just a pocket of air that you're flying into, but in comparison to the aircraft, it's hitting it straight on, right? So if you want to hold your, uh, hold your altitude while you have less power, what you need to do to create as much lift over the wings is begin to pitch up. As you pitch up, this cord line begins to increase its angle. Okay, so then we, we look at Newton's third law, which tells us that, um, that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So as, as the, the wing tips up higher and higher, the wind continues to hit it at this angle as the aircraft continues to fly into the wind this direction. And the wind will hit this and then bounce off downwards, which also, because the mass within the air molecules and the mass of the aircraft are colliding against each other, the collision of the air into this bottom portion of the wing, or essentially what it follows the cord line, it bounces off, goes down, the wing bounces up and goes off and that creates lift. Okay. So if that's happening, we're flying along, we pitch our nose up slightly to, to hold our straight and level path. We're increasing our angle of attack, which is the angle from the relative wind to this cord line. So if you're flying, a Cessna 152, such as the one I fly and this picture depicts, if you get up to a 20 degree angle, that's far beyond what, it, what the aircraft's wing can actually handle and it will stall. So why does it stall? So what happens is as the air hits the front of this wing, 
Again, we know that by Bernoulli's principle, as the air goes over the top of the wing versus the air going under the wing, it has to travel farther, it has to go faster, therefore it creates lift. At some point, this wing gets to the point where the air no longer sticks to the top of the wing. Normally it's going to be very smooth over the top and it's going to meet up down here. If we get it to the point where it's too steep, what happens is the air hits this wing and it starts to tumble over the top instead. So it kind of hits like this and it tumbles like this. So it's no longer going faster than what's underneath. That causes the wing to stall so it actually will fall out of the air. So if you're flying along at a high angle of attack and you begin to fall out of the air, what happens? The nose is going to pitch down because we know that by weight and balance the aircraft should be slightly nose heavy so that it continues to fly or at least glide even if there's no power behind it. It begins to fall and as it does, the relative wind points back into the face of the aircraft as it's moving forward. As that happens, your, air, your aircraft again begins to create lift and then you can recover from that stall. Now, most of us have been trained um, to use the air, airspeed indicator to tell us when the aircraft is going to stall. That's not what causes a wing to stall. You can stall a wing at any speed. You can be flying along at you know 150 miles an hour and yank on the yoke and it will turn up like this and you're still moving along here before the, the aircraft can change its trajectory and start making the relative wind come up like this. The first few seconds when you yank on it, you're going to change your angle of attack and you may just stall out and, and start falling out of the sky. Again, in most cases it's okay as long as you have enough altitude to recover. But if you're doing this close to the ground, you can stall and not be able to have enough time to recover before you hit the ground. But that brings up an interesting point because you can have a secondary stall. So if you're flying along and you stall the aircraft, so the relative wind's about here, the aircraft's here, it stalls. What happens next, it kind of begins to go nose down. You get this relative wind that's kind of still coming at your face, but you still probably have a little bit of a, a different angle of attack because you're falling down more than you're coming into the wind, right? So as you recover and you get up almost to enough speed to start uh, flying again and be able to recover from that, a lot of people will pull too hard on the yoke, and which causes the aircraft to tip back up again. Even though at this point you're flying pretty much level to the ground, so by sight picture while you're flying, it appears that you're at the right angle. This relative wind is actually coming at you something like this. So, so even though you're recovering from the stall, if you pull up too quickly, you're going to stall again and you're just going to continue to fall through the air. So that's kind of a quick uh, overview of what angle of attack is. The angle of attack sensor can tell you as you're approaching this stall, or even, even if you're flying flight and straight and level, it'll tell you that. If you start to tip your nose up, it'll it'll report back and say, hey, you're tipping your nose up a little bit. You're tipping it up a little more. Okay, now you're getting into a dangerous zone. Oh, you're about to stall. So each each time that you, you go deeper and deeper into this dangerous flight condition here like this, the uh, angle of attack sensor will actually notify you of that. So you never get to that point. You get down to this point maybe. And that includes when you're coming in uh, and you're doing a secondary stall, it'll tell you no matter how fast you're going, no matter which direction you're going, it'll tell you what direction this relative wind is and it will tell you when the wing is going to stall. So that's why the angle of attack sensor can give you more situational awareness that you can use to fly more safely. You may never get to the point uh, where you're even close to a stall, especially in the traffic pattern where you're close to the ground. That's an important thing to think about. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video um, and I'd like to invite you again to uh, please subscribe, click the button, uh, doesn't, doesn't cost any money. Um, I am looking to get to a thousand subscribers um, just so that I can get uh, a personalized URL. I have no interest in making money off of YouTube, I'm not going to do this as a job. Feel free to share, comment, uh, I'm sure that there are people out there that will argue against everything that I've just said. Totally acceptable, please uh, write them down in the comments, let people know. Uh, what your thoughts are, you know. Um, I'm happy to learn from any mistakes I might have made. Uh, just to reiterate, I'm not a certified flight instructor. I am not even an aerospace engineer. So um, I've learned these things through uh, lots of study and reading and uh, with practice in an aircraft, I've learned um, how to use angle of attack to my advantage um, and made it possible to uh, fly aircraft um, better. <laughs>